Welcome everyone to another edition of Rob's Mailbag here at uh, on SB Nation's YouTube channel. Uh, if you have a question for me next week, email address robsmailbag at sbnation.com. Would love to answer it in a week. Um, been away for a while, traveling all over the Midwest, uh, so I haven't done this in a few weeks. A little rusty, but um, we'll get back in. We'll see. I told you I was rusty. We'll get back into the groove, and um, uh, we should be doing this every week for the next couple of months, unless uh, something crazy happens. Um, so let's go ahead and get to the questions. First question today is from Richard. Richard writes, Rob, which player who's been out of the game for at least five years do you think could step in and bat at least 200 over a half season? When I watch former players announce games, I always wonder if they think they could go out there and still perform. Well, Richard, I'm sure that some of them do occasionally have that thought. I, I also think most of them are smart enough to know that they couldn't go out there and perform, especially after five years. I think that a lot of ex-players, a lot of guys who retire the next year, maybe two years down the road, think, ah, you know, I really wasn't that bad in my last season. If I, Maybe I shouldn't have quit. I can't think of anyone, any hitter who came back after being away for more than a year or so. While it's happened a number of times with pitchers, not major leaguers very often. Jim Morris, of course, was out of professional baseball for a while. This guy Steve Delabar with Mariners was out for a year, year or two. But pitchers are different. They quit because they get hurt. And then when they get healthy again, they get the arm's still there. Hitters don't typically have to quit because they're, they have a catastrophic injury. They quit because they just couldn't do it anymore physically, coordination-wise, quickness-wise. I don't see that being good enough five years later. And while not playing, there was some talk about Barry Bonds for a few years after he quit. People would say, why doesn't Team X sign Barry Bonds? He could probably still hit. And he probably could have. Not like he used to, but well enough to help a team as a DH. Five years down the road, I just think it's too far. Unless they were great when they quit. And guys don't quit when they're great. Uh, next question. This comes from Justin in Asheville. Rob, did you see that story about how, quote, a 10% income increase reduces World Series viewership by 1.8 million households? No, I didn't. So I looked it up. Click on the link you sent. Name of the piece is, is America's National Pastime Too Time Consuming by John Berger and Stephen J.K. Walters. This is in an academic journal, and unfortunately, I would have had to pay thirty-one fifty to read it, and I didn't, I didn't do that. Um, but I did read the abstract, which I will now read to you. World Series telecasts are now an inferior good. I like that term, inferior good. I don't know what it means, but I like it. Income and the time cost of consumption interact so that a 10% income increase reduces viewership by 1.8 million households. Increased avail availability of substitutes reduces ratings, but increased drama improves them. The point, I'm guessing, is that the more money you make, the less um, willing you are to sit on your couch for three and a half hours and watch a baseball game. I guess it makes a certain amount of sense. The problem is the solution, of course, is to have shorter ball games. Uh, the way you do that, one of the ways you do that is to have fewer commercials, and that's not anything that anybody in baseball wants. So I do think they can continue to do more to speed the game up, not just World Series, but regular season games as well. But they can do only so much. As long as pitchers are striking guys out and guys are walking, you can't get the game time down below, what, two and a half hours on average. Uh, but the postseason games, certainly, I think they have more commercials. I think they have an extra 30 seconds uh, per half inning in commercials. You could definitely cut that down, but again, you have the lost revenue. So uh, I'm not sure there's a solution to this, but I think we can all get behind quicker, um, not necessarily shorter games, but faster-paced games. I think that would be a win for almost everyone in the long term. Next question is from Michael. Orlowski. Michael sets up a situation. Runner at first base, the pitcher starts his motion and the runner goes. It's a pitch out and out of the corner of his eye, the batter sees the catcher come out of his crouch and step up to take the throw. If the batter attempted a swing of the bat and even grazed the catcher as the catcher stepped up to try to gun the runner out a second, wouldn't it have to be ruled catcher interference? Thank you for your consideration, longtime fan. Thanks, Mick. I looked in the rule book. I couldn't find anything about this. I know that extreme measures are allowed. I mean, whenever this happens, pitch out on a hit and run or a steal when the batter knows what's happening, the batter will swing if it's a hit and run and usually miss because the pitch out is way outside. 
And the broadcaster, the, the guy in the booth, will sometimes say he should have at least thrown his bat at the ball. But I think you have to make an effort to hit the ball. Even if that's throwing the bat, you could still make contact. Um, my guess, and again, this is not on the rule book that I could find, is that if you just push your bat out and touched the catcher with no real intention to get to the ball, um, I don't know the um, that the umpire would call interference. I could be wrong about that, but the umpires do have some discretion in terms of the integrity of the game, and I think this would be a clear violation of the integrity of the game. Uh, so I think that's why we haven't seen that, if, assuming, of course, that we haven't, because perhaps it's happened. Uh, last question is from Mike D. in Bellevue, Washington. Mike asks, Rob, is 7.5 Ks per nine innings too many? What, if anything, should be done about it? Well, I've written about this at least once or twice. I, I don't know that 7.5 strikeouts per nine innings is too many. It's hard to say what the, the right number is. Um, and I don't think you'd want to pick a right number because you're never going to be right on that number. And then you're always going to be making adjustments on the fly to try to get to it. Uh, I do think that the, the trend, the strikeout trend is disturbing. Uh, it's just going up and up and up. And as, as Bill James wrote a month or two ago on his website, Bill James Online, um, there's no indication that the trend is going to be arrested naturally. Historically speaking, we can only assume that there will be more and more strikeouts. I mean, yes, there probably is a natural limit, whether that's nine per game or nine per nine innings or 11 per, per game, who knows? I don't really think that anybody wants to see more strikeouts than we have now. I would like to see more ground balls, more fly balls, more hits. The game, to me, is more interesting when the whole team is involved. I think when you have, when it becomes a contest purely between the pitcher and the batter, I think it's a less interesting game. Which isn't to say that what we have right now isn't interesting. It certainly is. It could be more interesting, I think, with fewer strikeouts. As far as what could be done about it, the only obvious solution that I've that I've come up with is to, to lower the, the pitcher's mound by an inch. Um, or maybe it's two inches. I don't know. I, I really believe that, that baseball should experiment with different things, with different rules, to change up some of the things in the game. You could do try lots of things. Um, you can try them in the minor leagues. If you don't want to uh, train minor leaguers in different rules than they, than they use in the majors, you could try some things in the summer leagues in which the college players uh, play, the Cape Cod League. Uh, there's a North Woods League in the upper Midwest. They use wood bats. It seems like the perfect experimental environment. Granted, the, the abilities of the players are not the same, so you lose something there. But I just think that baseball should, should take some real interest in looking at ways to change the game. Just as experiments. Um, and I think lowering the mound by an inch or two would be a great first step. Just see what happens. See if strikeouts go down by 0% or... 10% or 40%. You really wouldn't know until you tried, but I think baseball should try. So at least they're ready. I mean, maybe two years from now, they decide, hey, you know what? Too many strikeouts. What can we do? Well, if you've got the experimental data, you've at least got an idea and you can begin to have a conversation. But right now, I feel like baseball is just sort of frozen in place and isn't even really considering um, making any substantive changes to how the game is played. And someday we're going to need them. We always have before. There's no reason to think that the game as it stands right now, is perfect. It's not. Nothing's perfect. That's all I have for this week. Um, hope to see you again next week. Again, it's, uh, this is Rob's Mailbag on SB Nation's YouTube channel. Please, 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 please send me some great questions for next week. I, I can never get enough. Um, and again, the email address right there on the screen at some point, if you're right now, Rob's Mailbag at SBNation.com. Great to be here. Thanks for thanks for coming, and uh, we'll see you soon.